So this morning we're going to talk about cadences and this is within the larger category of form which we'll be talking about uh, additionally. So part, an aspect, the concept of form is how the music is presented uh, in terms of the pacing of the music, the material, what's new material, what's old material, and the structure that your melodies, harmonies, and rhythms go into. That's a rough definition of what we're talking about with forms. Cadences. A cadence has a number of different properties. The cadence could be considered like a part of speech, like punctuation. It's usually at the end of a section. So if you have, in the English language, a sentence, that sentence can end in a question mark, it can end in a period. That punctuation is kind of what your cadence is in music. So you might have a phrase, phrase is the equivalent to sentence in this, in this analogy, that ends with some kind of cadence. So it's the ending of a, a, a portion. Now normally our phrases are four, four measures in length. So if you look for a cadence every four measures, there's, you'll often find one. Not always. Four measure phrases are the most common, but you can have five, six, even eight, kind of like double it up is not uncommon, three. What, what you look for to determine exactly whether you have a cadence or not is a, a momentary pause or rest in the music, in the musical line. Normally what that means is that the cadence is a, a longer note value. So if everything was moving in quarter notes and then you have a half note in the fourth measure, chances are that's your cadence. So again, cadences occur in a certain number of measures, four being the most common. It usually slows down rhythmically and harmonically, usually to a longer note value. Those are the things to look for. There's a number of different ways, kind of punctuation, you can have at the end. Like we said, you could have a period, you could have a, a question mark, and all these different cadence types are different levels of, or kind of like endings of a phrase. So let's start here. An, an authentic cadence. By definition, an authentic cadence is a cadence that goes 5, 1. So we're talking usually about two chords. The actual cadence is, happens on it's, it's, it's this whole thing, but it, the, the, the pause is usually on that second chord. So like if we're going quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, you might go half, half. Say we're in 4-4. Four, four. You could also go quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, whole note in the fourth measure. Something of that nature. There's options. But 5-1 means authentic cadence. Now, there's multiple types of authentic cadences. There's the perfect authentic and imperfect authentic. The abbreviation for perfect authentic, perfect authentic cadence. Imperfect, imperfect authentic cadence. So a perfect authentic cadence needs to have a couple things. It's got to be a 5-1 cadence, but there's more to it. So, let's see here. We say, one, both chords in root position. If either one of those chords or both are in an inversion, it's not a perfect authentic cadence. Both the five chord and the one chord must be in root position. But that's not enough. The soprano melody. Must be either scale degree two 
to 1 or 7 to 1. In other words, it must move by step from the 5 chord to the tonic in the 1 chord. By step, by scale step. Either it's going 2 1 or 7 1. We're ending on 1. Okay? So these two things have to be in place, and you have something that sounds very final. This is like your most, almost like an exclamation point would be the perfect authentic cadence. Let's hear what that sounds like. Um, give me one moment here. We'll make that happen. So, we're in the key of, let's say, C major. You might hear something like... That's a perfect authentic cadence. That's a perfect authentic cadence. because the melody went which means that your soprano instead went two to three it is no longer a perfect authentic cadence it is an imperfect authentic cadence it does not sound as final as a perfect authentic cadence so what types of things make up Imperfect authentic cadences. Well, in the, the, in the example I just played on the piano, both chords were still in root position, but we didn't have this in the soprano. So I could say that was an example of a root position imperfect authentic cadence. Both chords were in root position, but in this case, what happens is Soprano is not that. So, let's put a little make it visual for us. Be in C major. Let's say we have a, our five chord uh, G. Let's go B D. Uh, let's say, actually let me rewrite it like this, put the G down here, let's put D here, let's put, actually no, let's do G here, D here, B here, alright. So in this case, when you put a B here, in this kind of voicing, this is your 5 chord, you have no choice to, but to make it a perfect authentic cadence. Because this is the leading tone, it has to go here. So if we do something like this, that would be a perfect authentic cadence. And you label it PAC, perfect authentic cadence. You can't, so with this type of voice, you have no other choice because leading tone's in an outer voice. Let's say. We now have G, let's put a B here, a D here. So here, I have a choice. I can have the D move down to the C. This could go to an E, this could go to a G. If I did this, it's still a perfect authentic cadence. But instead, I can move here and put the E here, move that to C, keep that as a G. That is no longer a perfect authentic. That is an imperfect authentic cadence. And in this case, what type of imperfect authentic cadence? A root position imperfect authentic cadence. You can guess that when we say inverted, what that means is that we put one of, a, a, one of our chords, either the five or the one chord, into an inversion. So, here, Let's say instead we go 5, 6 to 1. We put a B here, we move to the C, 
let's say G here, um, D, G. As soon as we do this, 5, 6 to 1, we know that it's an imperfect authentic cadence. One, so I'll write here one or more chords in inversion. And then lastly, leading tone is where we sub seven diminished six for our five chord. If you remember our chart of harmonic progression, 5 and 7 diminished occupy the same dominant function. So we can substitute 7 for 5, and we would get an, a leaning tone imperfect authentic cadence if it were uh, 7 diminished 6 going to one. It doesn't really matter what the upper voices are, that's not going to affect what we're talking about for the cadence. So we now have covered really two types with subtypes on why it might not be imperfect. These are the things that could make it imperfect. A deceptive cadence is something that we've talked about before. A deceptive cadence is where our V chord goes to, uh, let me not use it like that, goes to a VI chord. Now, why do I write it like this? Well, this would be for major, this would be for a minor key. So, I indicate VI is minor in a major key, and the VI chord is major in a minor key. So that would be a deceptive. And as you remember, we have certain voice leading rules for deceptive cadences. Even though the sixth chord is in root position, we don't double the root, we double the third of that chord. A half cadence, we don't know, it doesn't really matter what comes first, but we end on a five chord. That is what makes a chord uh, makes it a half cadence. When you have a half cadence, and I, I guess you're probably not put the question mark here, we just say, just put whatever it is. If we are making our analogy with parts of speech, the I would say the perfect authentic cadence is an exclamation mark. The half cadence is a question mark. The imperfect is a period. I'm not sure what I would call a deceptive cadence. I don't know what I would call that. But uh, definitely the half cadence is a question mark. So you can't, you'll never end the piece with a half cadence. I mean, I, I, again, we'll never, I won't, probably shouldn't say never. There's always going to be someone that does, tries to do something different. But half cadence is almost always responded to with another phrase that has a cadence that ends in something more definitive. All right. So then the Phrygian half cadence is specifically a type of deceptive cadence, I'm sorry, a, a type of half cadence that occurs minor 4, 6 to 5, which means this is only in a minor key. The word Phrygian is Greek. It is one of the modes, the Greek modes for music. It's the third mode of the major scale. So if you take a major scale and start on the third note of the major scale, that will be your Phrygian mode. So if we're in C major, it would be E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E would be your E Phrygian mode. So it gets, derives its name from that mode. So, let's kind of see what that would look like. Let's say we are in A minor, and we want to go 4, 6 to 5. That is our Phrygian half cadence. Our four chord is D, F, A. F is in our bass. 
going to E in our bass. We can double any one of those notes because none of them are the leading tone, leading tone and it's in first inversion. So let's put A. D, A, like that. Then here, we need an E major triad, so E, G sharp, B. This would move nicely to my G sharp. This can go to my D. Uh, I can't do it like that, because I want, I'd want to go like that, but that would be parallel fifths. So I'm not going to do that. I might change my doubling to make my life easier. Um, I won't, don't want to move this. Maybe I want, because I want to get to the B. So maybe here I make this a double a D up here. So that I can just go down. Nope, no, I don't want to do that either. If you look at this, this would be direct, uh, direct fifths. So I do want to move a contrary motion here. So I don't have that issue, but I can't do this because that gives me parallel fifths. So maybe I change this. I can't make that an F because then that becomes parallel octaves. Uh, so if this can't be an F, can't be a D. I'm running out of options here. Um, it almost seems like we have two A's that split apart. That's nice. Um, we're trying to figure out what to do with the doubling here. We definitely need a D somewhere. But if we put the A down, if we put the A down here, the D here, so this D goes up to the E, this goes up to the B. Now what we have is parallel fourths, and that's not a problem. So lots of problems that you could have done, that I could have done. And I wrote, and then I said, oh, no, don't do that, don't do that. Let's hear what it sounds like. We have in the key of A minor, so. And that would not be the end of the piece, you would expect. You hear this a lot in sacred music. The Phrygian cadence 4 6 to 5. Finally, we get to our plagal cadence, another cadence you hear a lot in sacred music. Sacred cadence, uh, this would be 4 1. 4 1 is a plagal cadence. Let me hear, show you what that would sound like. This would be authentic. And then you do something like this. And that would be plagal. So plagal cadence again, 4-1, like amen, is typically done. All right. Those are a bunch of different cadence types that you are now aware of. Thank you.